Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the broadcast today. Got a great sermon entitled, God's Greatest Promise to His Children. Do you realize that as God's child, you have a right to stand on God's greatest promise, salvation for your entire family? Oh, you don't know my family. Oh, you don't know my God. You can get, him, you get all your family down to a thousand generations. Isn't that amazing? So if you got a kid going crazy on you, don't, it don't make no difference. All you got to do is believe the promise instead of the problem, and you'll get the promise. This is part one of God's greatest promise to his children. Call a friend. Tell them to turn that television on. They're going to be blessed by this. Watch this and receive from God. Now, there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible, but this is the greatest one. Because I don't care how rich you got, rich you get, or whatever, if you don't have anybody to share it with, it's really not worth much of nothing. If you don't have good family, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what's the use of being rich? What are you going to do? After you bought the house, the cars, the clothes, the shoes, the jewelry, I don't know, whatever you think rich is, you have no one to share it with. You have no one to go out and eat dinner with. You have no one to talk about <clears throat> memories past or utterances for future. So it's wonderful that the family should be saved. And God created us because he wanted some kids. He wanted a family. Now in 1 Timothy chapter 2, we have to first find scripture that says that we can have this. Well, is it the will of God for all your family to be saved? Because some of y'all are saying, oh, you don't know all my family. Some of my family went to heaven. There'd be another revolution. But look what the Lord said in 1 Timothy chapter uh, 2. I'm in 2 Timothy. Let me go there. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. The word men, men there means the human race. And to come unto the knowledge of of the truth. I got to read it again. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men, all people, to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. If you reading that verse there, underline the word all, who desires all men or people to be saved. Now write this down as a point. All means every one of your loved ones, not some of them. All means every one of your loved ones. That is God's will that everyone that is part of your family should come to the knowledge of the truth. Not some, not a percentage, even though it might be a high percentage of your family, but all of them. So not only can you share great things in this life, but in the life to come for eternity. So all means every one of your loved ones. Now, write this down. If it's God's desire, it must become your desire. Now, let me say it again. If it's God's desire that all your family come to the knowledge of God, then it must become your desire. That's something you need to work on. Because I'll be honest with you, there's some people in my family, I, if they didn't come to heaven, it'd be okay. I don't mean that to be rude, but I mean, I'm just talking flesh here. I'm talking about, you know, because everybody got somebody in your family. You know. You know. When they show up at one of the family things, a fight going to start. <laughs> something going to happen. They're always messing up something. They're always wanting something. They're always trying to use somebody. <laughs> Look at everybody. Boy, he's been to my house, hasn't he? <laughs> no, I've been to my house. So I didn't have, I'm going to be honest, I didn't have <laughs> the desire for all my family <laughs> to be saved. Don't look at me weird. You're the same way. <laughs> Kathy, one time, I, I, I think she loved her aunt, but she was a little embarrassed of her when I first met Kathy. <laughs> and I'll keep her name private. But she said, I got a certain aunt. What's her name? <laughs> Thank you, she said. <laughs> she said, I have a certain aunt that's coming. Now, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know Kathy's family. And Kathy's family has the most phenomenal nicknames you ever see ever heard in your life. She introduced me to her cousin. She said, this is my cousin Chong. <laughs> Chong? Chong. Oh, this is Tili and Tulu. <laughs> Good Lord. 
I said, hello, T. Lee, where's Tulu? I said, I said, T. Lee a girl? No, T. Lee is a boy, Tulu is a girl. All kinds of stuff, I didn't know, I got all mixed up. Well, <laughs> this aunt came, and when she came, her slip was hanging down about that far, and she saw me, she said, come here, Shy. I said, no. She called me Shy. Can I call you Shy? Yeah, you can call me Shy. Come here. So you are Kathy Barford, Lord Jesus. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> and Kathy was a little embarrassed because she's a young girl. Kathy was, what, 16 years old, something like that. And uh, it was a unique family and still is. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that, <laughs> praise God. Let me get back to the point before I get myself in trouble. <laughs> if it's God's desire, it must become your desire. All means every one of your loved ones. Yeah, but you don't understand how bad they can become. How do I get my loved one saved if it's the greatest promise to his children? Now, to you, it's a promise. But to God, it's a prophecy. All the promises of God are yea and amen. So prophecy is history wrote in advance. When God speaks something, he's not just promising, promising you something. He's prophesying to you. By his stripes, you are healed. You say, I am sick. He's not dealing with your am sick. He's dealing with your word healed. If you can ever focus on your answer as much as you focus on your problem, your answer will consume your problem. Do you see what I'm saying? So when God says, all your family, that all men, that he desires all men to be saved, all your family to be saved, that is a prophecy, which is even greater and more powerful than a promise. Do you see that? Because a promise, you can put a C-O-M in front of it and it becomes compromise. But if you put a C-O-M in front of prophecy, it don't mean nothing. Prophecy will come to pass. Do you understand what I'm saying? So all means every one of your loved ones. And if it's God's desire, it must become your desire. What do you say? Well, how do I get my family to be saved? They won't even listen to me talk about Jesus. Write this down. Underground prayer produce above ground results. You got to go underground. Because some of your family, if you look at it naturally, ain't worth saving. They, they cuss all the time. You talk about, go, they just cuss you out. They don't care. So you got to go underground with your prayer. So underground prayers, I love that, produces above ground results. See, so you got to go underground. Now you and God's got to go underground because if two of you is agreed. To write it down, underground prayer produces above ground results. Now what is prayer? Why do you and God need to pray for that person? Prayer is God and you working together. Write that down. Prayer is God and you working together. It is something you can do without them even knowing it. See, my mother and Kathy went underground to get me saved. Because every time they talked to me about God, I didn't want to talk about God. I said, been there, done that. To me, God was not a person. God was a church. God was a denomination. God was an institution. But God is really a person. Oprah Winfrey thinks God's a feeling. No, God's a person. Oprah's just trying to feel it. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it'd be critical. That's, that's the words from her mouth, not mine. So Kathy and, and, and my mom went underground to pray for me. And under that underground prayer, they produced above ground results. It was God, Kathy, and Mama working together for me. Because I was too stupid to understand what they were doing. They were actually saving my life. Amen. Mm, Amen. Mm, mm. But you got to know that it's God's desire to do this. And that it's his greatest promise. People say, I want to get rich. But if you don't have anybody to spend it with, then it's nothing. I want to be healed. Yeah, but if, you, if everybody around you is sick, you can't do nothing. You see what I'm saying? So it's God's greatest promise to his children. So let me say it again. Prayer is God and you working together. It is something you can do without them even knowing. Kathy would pray for me when I was asleep. But sometimes I woke up. And I'd say, get your hand off me, woman. Keep your prayers to yourself. I ain't into this stuff. So she had to go further underground. 
And then she knows I love knowledge. And I was trained in biblical things because I always wanted to know why the priest did what he did, why the preacher said what he said, why some people get healed and some don't. I, I, I was always a why, but well, why? Why and how? I want to know how it happened and why it happened. And I still have that in me. So we would, she said that in her message the other day. We would be driving. I used to drive. I was a rock entertainer. So we'd drive sometimes 12, 14 hours to get to the next uh, place. And she said, Jesse, she knew nothing about God at all. None, zero. She never read the Bible. But mama made us read the Bible. Or we had to read it together, which was one of the, some of the most boring times of my entire life <laughs> because I was a heathen. But I knew it pleased mama. Don't ever please mama, because if mama ain't pleased, ain't nobody please. I mean, even the dog and the cat know that. So, daddy would say, act like you like it. <laughs> That's my father. Act like you like it. Because she gets on me, I get on you. You understand? How many times she said, all right, all y'all kneel down, we're going to pray. Oh, Lord, God Almighty. I kneel down. Never thinking she'd ask me what I'm praying about. And she'd pray, and I'd listen. After a while, I wouldn't listen. I could hear this voice in my <laughs> Which was her praying. I didn't hear what she said. I wasn't interested. And she said, Jesse, what did you pray? I said, it's private. <laughs> I didn't pray nothing. That's how private it was. But mama would not give up. Mama would not give up. She just kept on. And then, of course, when I became a man, she'd get in my face. And, you know, in that generation, you weren't allowed to talk back. Amen. Let me say it again. You weren't allowed to talk back. Because you had to go to the dentist the next day if you did. How many people know what I'm talking about? If your kid said, shut up, mama, there'd be a funeral the next day. <laughs> Times are changing, aren't they? So when you understand that it's God's desire that all men be saved, then you say, how many men? How many of my family, let's get a number. How many of my family can be saved? How about the ones that are going to be born into my family? You just think of the ones that are born and the ones that were past born in the past. But God not only deals with the past and the present, he goes to the future. How do you know that? Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And look what God says in Deuteronomy chapter 7. I love this verse, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. The faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a what? A thousand generations. Which means this, if the Duplantis clan keeps producing and God delays his coming for a millennium, I can pray today and I have the, not the promise, but the prophetic utterance that Meredith's children, children's children, 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 children will come to the knowledge of Jesus. Even though I may die and go home to be with the Lord, I will meet their children's children. So this is your great, 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 great grandfather. That's how far that prophecy exploded when it came out of the mouth of God. A thousand generations. Now when mama saw 1 Timothy Two and Deuteronomy 7, it was a win-win scenario. She used to tell me, I don't have to see you saved, but I'm going to see you saved. Because God promised me. 
Well, what happened was God did more than promised her. He prophesied to her through his word. That's why it's the greatest promise ever given or prophecy ever given to the children of men that they would come to the knowledge of Jesus in every area of their life. See, Jesus is not a religion. Jesus is a person. Christianity is a religion. Christ is a person, and Christ is not Jesus' last name. People think Jesus Christ, last name. No, his Christ is, what is the, what's on him, the anointed one in his anointing. Jesus is his name. If you're Jewish, Yeshua is his name. Whatever. It don't matter how you pronounce it, whatever. It's just his name. So God wants you to spend eternity with everyone that's ever been related to you. So I'm a, if Jesus tarries and I die and Kathy die, I will get to know, if not here, there, my descendants. Do you see that? That's a powerful thing. That's why God made it one of the eight things to believe for. Why? Because he wanted you to know these people. He wanted you to have fellowship with these people. You can't kill a Christian. They come back. You, everyone you know that died and went to heaven is coming back. Do you understand that? Oh, death, where's our grave? Go oh, grave or oh, death, where's your sting? Your grave. It, it can't hold them. That's the power. No other religion, quote, quote, religion, promise you that kind of effect. Somebody shout somebody. My Lord, my Lord. So when you see that, a thousand generations, write this down, you have by the mouth of God, a faithful God, a thousand generations of your family in one prophetic utterance. Notice what the verse says. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God that keepeth covenant. People say, Brother Jesse, where did you learn how to live by faith? God! Every time I tried to learn it, men, from someone else, I saw weakness. I, there's some men and women I highly esteem in the faith, but I've seen their faith fail, but I've never seen God's faith fail. Amen. You know why? Because he's always kept it. Right. The only way faith doesn't work is if you don't keep it. You've heard me say that over and over. And the Bible, as I said here before, doesn't make any sense. It wasn't designed to make sense. It makes faith. It's a faith factory to take care of your present and your future. So, if you want to change your present, quit telling God what you got. He already know that. He know you're broke, sick, busted, and disgusted. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. He can see it on your face. Tell him what you want. Kathy never comes to me and opens up her closet and shows me what she has. Never. I have never, I've never had Kathy in going on 38 years of marriage at the time of this preaching rock, walk me into her closet and say, look what I have. No, she takes me to another store to tell me what she wants. She's trying to do that yesterday. Would you like to go to Saks Fifth Avenue? I ain't stupid. No. <laughs> she has never taken me in and let me look at her shoes or whatever she's got. She's never taken me in and said, have you noticed the amount of jewelry I have? If she talks jewelry, she takes me to a jewelry store. And the church world, for some crazy reason, always tell you to tell God what you have. He's not stupid. He knows that. Ladies and gentlemen, God knows what you have and he knows what you need. See, so many people telling God what they have. He already knows that. Tell him what you want. Can you trust them and tell him what you want? I want you, ask yourself that question. You mean I can actually tell God what I want? Yes. Yes, you can. The law is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let patience have its perfect work that you're perfect in its hour, wanting nothing. The young lions do suffer lack, but he that seeks my faith shall not want any good thing. Man, that's some powerful scripture. Can you trust him to save your family? Let's think about that, because that's what he wants. He wants your whole family going to heaven so you can enjoy yourself for eternity with your family. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, New King James Version says this, but this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Watch this. 
who desires all, notice that little word, all men be saved, all people, and to come to the knowledge of the truth. What is that truth? That Jesus loves us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shouldn't perish, but have everlasting life. Think about that for a minute. You want everlasting life? Yes. You want it for your family? Yes. You want it for eternity? Yes. That's what it means, everlasting. There was a great question that came in from a man here at the ministry. His name was Tim. He asked this, if the wages of sin is death, but God washes our sins away, then do we still have to pay for the consequences of our past sins? Well, I'll tell you something, Tim. The Bible said what you sow is what you reap, and that's true. But when God washes away, there's no evidence against you. So now what you start over right there. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, Lord. Now, I know what you sow is what you reap. But you know what? I really believe this. This is my personal opinion, that when you ask God to forgive you of your sin, not, and I mean, you, you don't just say forgive, you repent, you turn from, you go the other way. What happens is God goes in that field where you sowed that seed and just rips it out so you don't have to get all that junk coming at you because God said, be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. But you can change that every day with the power of the word of God. You know, I've said some things I shouldn't have said and some I paid for and some I did not because I really believe God went to my field and ripped that out because it, Jesse repented over that. Isn't that good? Praise God. We just have a great God. I just want everybody to know, I'm telling you, we have a great God. I mean that sincerely. Partners, I can't thank you enough for what you do for this ministry. Your faithful financial support has been so vitally important. In 41 years of full-time ministry, we've never had a deficit. Why? Because of God Almighty, because of you, my partner. I want, I want to thank you for sharing our vision and God's vision to get this world saved. So many people tell me all the time, when are you going to retire? I guess, I guess, do I look tired? I don't know. But when you understand vision, we're linked up with you, at your vision and our vision, and we're linked up with God. We're making that vision come to pass. Now, I want to tell you something. Man. God told me to go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I can't do that by myself. I used to think I could when I was young. But then I, I started studying the scripture, and I found out that Jesus went and get 12 disciples. Then he went and hired 70 part-time because he couldn't do it by himself. Neither why. Because he took upon flesh the son of man. See? Yes, he's the son of God, but he operated when he was on the earth as the son of man. Partners, Thank you for supporting this ministry. We have so many great projects going on here. Nothing too small and nothing too big. I'm telling you, we believe in God for a $20 million donor. Can you believe that? We got a $20 million uh, uh, project, a $5 million and a $1 million. There's 26, you've heard me say it. There's $26 million worth of projects that God wants us to do. And evidently, he thinks we can do it. And together, we can. Glory to God, that's what it's all about. That's reaching people, changing lives. Simply one soul at a time. You know, I heard a man say the other day, you know, my, my God, man, I, I don't have time for just one person. And I thought about Jesus left the 99 to go get the one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I made up my mind, I'll leave the 99 to go get the one because the 99, they have enough protection amongst themselves. But that one is by themselves. So I go down there and do what the Lord tells me to do. Do you want to, but just sometimes I don't. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I just want to stay home. Sometimes I'm so tired, it's hard to sleep. But you know what? I made up my mind I will reach my destiny and complete and, and get to my destination, complete what God wants me to do. I thank you for supporting this ministry. I, I ask you to pray about what God would have you to do. Nothing too small, like I said earlier, and nothing too big. 100% of us going in the world evangelism. We've been debt free so long, we don't even know what debt is. Isn't that a blessing to God? I just love it. Now, I want you to stay right there. I'll be back in, an, in just a moment to speak another word and pray with you. I want you to watch something that's going here, going on here at Jesse DePlantis Ministries. I'll be back in a moment. Watch this. What made Jesus know the difference between a temptation and a manifestation? There's a vast difference between believing God and believing in God. It took some time. It took some discipline. It took some dedication. It took some commitment. There's no short roads to manifestation. The difference between temptation and manifestation. Available for your November partnership of $50 or more. Visit JDM.org for more information. You know, it's an honor to help you grow your faith and knowledge in Christ Jesus. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I encourage you to order a copy of today's message, God's Greatest Promise to His Children. 
How do I do that? You can go to jdm.org and you can get it there. Also, you should check out our YouTube channel. Well, people like that YouTube channel. You'll find more videos to enjoy. And I mean, people do enjoy it. So go subscribe today and you'll be blessed by it. Before you go, remember, God wants all your loved ones saved. And underground prayer, covert operation works, not some of the time, all the time. Let's go underground together right now. You want to do that? Can I pray for you? Father, in Jesus' name, I come boldly to the throne of grace with this petition and supplication with thanksgiving. Lord, you said we got the promise of our family down to a thousand generations. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you, get under these people's feet. We bind you. Stop your hindering from people, children getting saved, family getting saved. We speak the word of the living God, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I, I, I get a little excited when I pray because I know that God hears us. You know, prayer is the language of God. People say, you know, God just didn't talk to me very much. Well, start talking to him, and I promise you, don't get up after you finish talking and run off because he'll speak some words to you if you listen to him. So who, who's going to get saved this week in your family? Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. But just you got some faith. You better know it. The Bible said two of us agree we just prayed together, man. We didn't just pray just to fill up the TV time. We prayed so you could get something from God Almighty. Partners, thank you once again for helping me preach this gospel. I will bring joy. I will bring blessing. I will get rid of people's financial debt by teaching them the word of God. Thank you for watching today. Till next week, I love you. Jesse said, bye-bye. Can you really have everything God has put on your heart? Can you ask anything in Jesus' name? Jesus says you can. Jesse's book, Your Everything Is His Anything, will revolutionize your life. Whether you have a vision, a dream, or something that your heart desires, Your Everything Is His Anything is going to inspire you to believe and achieve it all. It's time to expand your view of what prayer and faith can do in your life. Your Everything Is His Anything. Order your copy today. If you'd like to meet my friend Jesus, he would love to meet you. It is truly a blessing from God year after year to go all over the world sharing messages of who He really is. Really is. Really is. He's looking for ways to get blessing to you. Now, those messages are available at your fingertips. 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 I win people to myself. Then I win them to God. Because they, they don't like Jesse, they ain't gonna like Jesus. I'm made in his image and in his likeness. That's not an arrogant statement. The only Jesus some people may ever see is the Jesus in you. Are you attractive?